good evening everyone we will be starting in 2 or 3 minutes uh, please call your friends who might be interested in this talk uh, we will be discussing everything about gsoc and open source in general so it will be a very informative talk and uh, you will benefit greatly from it we we'll start in 2 or 3 minutes at the maximum Okay, so hello everyone. Today, Code Peak in association with AVL, we have brought for you open source Ask Me Anything with GSOC uh, participants. The people over here with me have all cleared GSOC and have contributed successfully to their organizations in the past. And today we will be discussing one most frequently asked questions about GSOC, and we will also be taking your questions on the same. Welcome to the talk. Uh, I'll briefly introduce uh, about our uh, guests and also about GSOC. So for those who don't know, GSOC stands for Google Summer of Code and it is one of the most prestigious open source programs in the world. It was started in 2005 by Google with the aim to connect open source organizations with open source contributors. And right now it is a very large program. Many, many, many people apply to it and a few are selected to contribute to the organization for 12 plus weeks. There is a up till now, there have been no restrictions on the country or on the background. Students from different backgrounds participate in this program and uh, appear for uh, companies from different domains, ranging from medical sciences to software development to machine learning. There are a lot of domains on which you can contribute. And so I will be basically starting by uh, introducing our guests. So first of all, we have Devyam Singhal. Devyam is a student from IIT Guwahati majoring in the CSE department. He got accepted for Google Summer of Code in the previous year, 2021, with a Boo C++ libraries. Um, Devim, can you say a few lines about your organization and uh, about your experience? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I am Devim. So uh, 
I was free during my second year summers. So I found GSOC to be the perfect opportunity to which I could apply to. So uh, basically the idea of contributing to the code of a real organization really fascinated me. So this is why uh, uh, I applied for GSOC. So my G uh, experience for GSOC was really an amazing experience. Uh, I learned a lot of new stuff and had and used to have insightful discussions with my mentors. So about my organization, uh, Boo C++ Libraries is a collection of C++ libraries. Uh, it has various sub modules such as uh, real, multi-precision, geometry, astronomy. Uh, the work could be considered as mathematical in nature. Uh, Boost Libraries uh, makes extensive use of templates and the metaprogramming concept. Uh, this is from my side. Thank you, Devyam. We also have today with us Christian from IIT Patna. He is interested in open source and security domain. He has worked on the web application Honeypot, Snare, as a part of his GSOC program under the, the HoneyNet project. Krishnan, can you explain a bit about your project and your experience? Yeah, sure. So for the uninitiated, Honeypot is a, some application that we can use to trap hackers. So I, I, I hope that gives you a basic understanding of what Honeypots are. So my organization, the HoneyNet project, works specifically on Honeypots and their development. So I worked on a web application, Honeypot Snare. And so that's it, I guess, about my organization. I really like security and open source software. Yeah, that's all. Okay, great. We have with us Swapnal Sahil from IIT Guwahati. He was accepted in the previous year, 2021, under the SCORE Lab, which stands for Sustainable Computing Research Lab. And uh, so Swapnal, can you explain uh, more about your project instead of me explaining it? Swapnal, I think your mic is muted. We still cannot hear you. Uh, it shows that your mic is muted from here. Um, okay, we'll move to Sparsh for now. I think Swapnil has some issue in his connection. Okay, he'll fix it. So we also have with us Sparsh from IIT Roorkee, and he's an open source enthusiast, and he has contributed to various open source projects. He even has his own open source project, which is very helpful for uh, participants preparing for GSOC. And he was selected under the OPIA Foundation in the previous year. Sparsh, can you say about your organization? Hi guys, uh, I'm Sir Shadurwal, uh, and I contributed to the OPIA uh, Foundation uh, in 2021 in the Google Summer of Code period. Uh, my GSOC journey was uh, quite a thrilling one. Uh, there was uh, there were various ups and downs uh, in it. Uh, there were some sad moments like uh, I contributed to uh, around two to three months to a particular organization, and when the list of organizations was announced, I I got to know that uh, that organization was not selected for GSOC. So that was a heartbreaking moment for me. But uh, after some two, three days, I prepared myself uh, to again uh, resume back uh, to, to the contributions. And uh, then I successfully, uh, I was fortunate enough to crack it in uh, another hall. And there were also some uh, very happy moments like uh, uh, seeing your first PR getting merged into the code base. And uh, about my project, uh, it, was, it was also a quite fun project. Uh, it was not related to web or app development. It was basically to check the quality of code that others write. So, this is the best thing. This is a pain for others because you're checking the quality of their code. Uh, so this was uh, actually a new domain. I was uh, not at all introduced uh, uh, about this in, 
before contributing but uh, with the help of the mentors i, I again much experience over. so that's it okay thanks a lot spesh so uh like starting with the experience so whenever like when you applied to gsoc all of you you might have had some interest in open source so what was that initial spark that you had to contribute to open source in general yeah any of you can answer no problem The, the biggest uh, spark was that uh, your piece of code is is uh, is going to affect thousands and millions of users uh, around the globe. And uh, I've I've also been a regular user of various open source projects. So if you get a chance to uh, contribute to it, then uh, that that is indeed a proud moment for you. So that was uh, one of the motivating factors for me. Okay. Okay. Great. So. Um... since we are starting about gsoc we are just talking about it so can you explain the end to end flow like how does uh, one start to the finish from making your first commit to your getting your stipend what is the entire flow uh yes so i can tell about this uh so uh, basically first of all uh, students have to choose an organization to which they'll be contribute to so uh, we'll explain more about how to choose an organization so after that uh, we can make some uh, pull requests and commits to the organization uh, uh, after that uh, the applications for gsoc start around uh, march to april uh, so there we have to there we have to make a proposal uh, so this proposal we can make with the help of mentors so it's very important to communicate with mentors throughout uh, your first year to the submission of your proposal uh, after that the coding period begins if you are selected so the coding period goes on for around uh, 12 weeks and this time there's a change so uh, you can extend your gsoc project up to 22 weeks also hey, so uh, uh, there yeah uh, yes sorry guys i just open by your your other uh yes so continuing on so uh you will be guided by your mentor so uh, where you will be having meeting with your mentors so after uh, there are some evaluations which happen in between so uh, in our case there were two evaluations one at the mid and the other at the end so uh, you have to pass both these evaluations and these evaluations are uh, done by your mentors so uh that's it okay so all in all first uh, like summarizing it first of all you have to choose your organization make some contribution to it before before the gsoc period starts then uh, once the application start you will be most uh, in some organizations they have, they list the projects on which they will work so you can choose any of the projects you can prepare a proposal on what you are going to do for the project in the upcoming in the coding period and then once you submit the proposal they will shortlist the proposals and they will select you some organizers take interview as well as devim said and then uh, once you have cleared the selection procedure then you will be given a time of 12 weeks or more as uh, in this year and in which you will have to write code for that organization according to your proposal within that timeline and there will be evaluations so the mentors will evaluate how much work you have done and whether your code is uh, good or bad and then according to that you have to pass the evaluations and once you pass both the evaluations you will be uh, finally marked as completing gsoc and you will be getting your stipend for completion of the project so this was what he said in a nutshell so yeah so sapnal we missed out on you uh, so you can tell about your project uh, sapnal you are still not audible 
now uh, yeah it's okay sorry about that uh, hi everyone i am swapna sahil pursuing chemical science technology from iit Guwahati. so my organization for google summer of code 2021 was code lab which is sustainable computing research lab and this lab has conducted research covering various aspects of uh, sensor networks embedded system digital forensic and uh, uh, several other software tools so and my project was OpenML, which is an open source forensic tool for android so uh, on android so a smartphone which uh, has digital forensic investigators throughout the life cycle of digital forensic investigations so if i talk about my experience this was completely new for me and people in our community were very helpful as well as serious if you talk or related to work and the projects i believe uh, you should also at least try to be in one of the open source community and it will really have a lot uh, to meet the talented people like uh, divyam sparsh and all of us yeah that was my brief uh, introduction thanks priya so um like we had in the chat uh, we have some questions on how to start for gsoc so one of the first questions is is it too late to start because uh, some of the guys all might already think it is mid december so uh, krishna i think you can answer this is it too late to start in december okay i'll go ahead so yes if you are asking this question it is definitely too late in fact i personally started preparing for gsoc from a second standard in school so like when my peers were studying basic arithmetic, I was learning asynchronous JavaScript. No, I'm just kidding. So jokes apart, I'd say it is never too late to, you know, start contributing to open source projects. The earlier you start, the better. You'll have more time to go through the code base, more time to understand the ins and outs of your project. And thus you'll have more time for quality PRs. This will also enable more discussions with your mentors and so on. I can go, I can keep going on and on. But all said and done, I feel mid-December is still cool. You can start off comfortably, man. It's no issue. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so, uh, the most asked question about GSOC, how to begin preparing from the scratch? So, Swapil, I think you can go ahead on how to start with uh, Yes. See, I don't think there is any need for preparation whatever you are doing and learning now you can find related stuff there also so if you are doing web development you can find projects of all level there in all languages and frameworks and not only web development there are so many projects related to game development machine learning even if you are doing competitive programming you can apply for projects which are basically related to uh, with optimizations and all and some some improvement in the code works also like this and yes, there are some prerequisites, obviously, you need to learn Git and GitHub. And uh, also, you should know how to code. I guess these are the things uh, which you should know before going for GSOC. Yeah, so there aren't any prerequisites as such, a uh, decent knowledge of Git and GitHub. And any one language you are interested in or proficient in, you can go for that. So, OK. And this is another burning question we have from our participants. How to choose an organization as a first time participant? So in this question, what I would like to do is I would like to ask each of you how you chose your organization. So you can go one by one. Uh, so uh, if you read my uh, blog, you already know about my how I choose the organizations. So. In my case, I first note down all the organization by searching tags based on my skill set and interest. Then I created a sheet where I note down these organization with number of students who got selected in the last consecutive years. And then I search for good projects there. And like uh, you can only uh, apply for three projects in any uh, in organization. Doesn't matter which one. And uh, mine was well bit risky as i applied for only one only uh, one project and it got accepted so they are so they are, you you need to introduce there and uh, don't forget to tell that why you come there and they will eventually uh, tell you how 
how they how they will go for the GSOC if if they are going or not like this. Especially, do you want to continue? We uh, two to three main factors uh, that uh, that were the uh, major key uh, things that uh, I looked in an organization. The first one was uh, how many times an organization was selected in the past two years. So uh, since I started contributing a bit early, so uh, it's obvious that you would like to go with that organization uh, that is getting selected from uh, that is continuously getting selected from the recent years. So uh, my first criteria was uh, to see which orgs are getting uh, selected in almost every year. And the second criteria was uh, how active the maintainers and the uh, mentors are of, of that particular org. Like you would see that there are some orgs. Uh, uh, in which people so these are the two main things that i look like searching for logs okay uh devampir can you go ahead uh yes uh so uh, basically i choose organizations which uh, match my interests so uh, I, as i was interested in mathematics in mathematics so uh, I shortlisted around three to four organizations. Uh, next, uh, I then looked at the ideas and the projects lists of the past years. So this gave me a good idea about what the current work is going on in the organizations. Uh, it's also very important to uh, connect with the mentors in the organization's communication platform, uh, which could which you could do by simply introducing yourselves. Uh, and also then I had a look at the issues in the GitHub repo and some of these uh, repositories have a good first issue to which you could have a look at. So this is how I uh, choose my organization. Great. Uh, Krishna, can we have your say? So in, in my case, I felt I followed a very simple approach. So I just found a few consistent, so consistent orgs which work in my field, my favorite field, which is security. So I went ahead and explored their projects. So I also went ahead to talk with the community and mentors to find if they're actually a good fit for me. Because at the end of the day, GSOC is an open source program. So I feel no effort is wasted in learning more about the amazing projects that exist on there. Yeah, great. So. Uh... See, you can you can see our uh, participants have a varied experience. Some of them contributed to security, some to pure C plus plus organizations, while some contributed to uh, some research organizations. So there is a variety, and uh, that is what we wanted to say. That in GSOC there are different organizations, and it is highly likely for whichever tech stack you know or you are comfortable, there is an organization for that. So don't hesitate on applying, or just you just need to look at the right places. So. Um, one of the things that when when first timers approach GSOC organizations or when we look up the organizations, one problem that we face is you open the GitHub repo for that organization and you see the code base. The code base is humongous. There are different repositories. There are different readmes, and you just get uh, people get lost in these code bases. So uh, since you all have already contributed to these organizations, what can you say? So would be best to start reading these code bases and start contributing to these organizations. I'd like to take this one. Uh, th this is a very genuine issue that uh, I faced uh, many times while contributing to the organization. So uh, like, like most of us, uh, we'll, we'll get overwhelmed by, by seeing uh, such a large code base. Uh, the projects are very big, and the it consists of thousands of files. So uh, the thing I want to say to you is that uh, never take a look at the overall code base. If you decide to see, uh, if you try to try to understand the overall code base at once, you'll you'll never understand it. Uh, also, I could say that even the mentors don't fully under understand the whole code base. So uh, uh, it's totally pointless if you uh, think that uh, you you'll get you'll get to understand the whole code base. So the proper way to approach uh, uh, or getting more and more familiar with the code uh, is by working on issues. 
start with the uh, very easy issues uh, like just fixing a normal css so what what that will do is uh, that will increase your familiarity with the code base uh, uh, significantly like uh, let's say you just fixed a minor css bug but because of that you came to know about where the css files are located in the project and uh, how how uh, the files are getting linked uh, to the html and things like that so as you keep on increasing the difficulty of uh, uh, the issues that you solve the more and more uh, familiarity uh, will of, with the code base will get increased so uh, the perfect answer to this is solve more and more number of issues and never take a look at the uh, whole code base at once okay so if you don't see the entire problem you won't be afraid so look at the part in which you want to contribute and then just go for it that would be our answer okay so um talking about applying to organizations what uh, how do you prepare a proposal that gets selected because uh, you contribute to your organization you give your best and then you if you don't prepare a good proposal the mentors are not very likely to select you so uh, Sapnil, can you say how to prepare a good proposal? Uh, yes. Am I audible? Am oh. I audible? Uh, am I audible, Gunjan? Yes, Sapnil, you are audible. So yeah, see, proposal is very important as it will be showing your whole contributions till that day, and whatever you. Uh, 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 whatever you propose the idea to the organization so i will say try to uh, provide your full information and make sure your project title is short and clear and uh, also include all the details asked by the organization if they have some proposal template for that and make a brief clear work breakdown structure with milestone and deadlines and uh, be sure to communicate uh, uh, personal experiences and the skill that might be relevant to the project and uh, summarize your educa education work and uh, open source uh, early experiences and uh, list down your skills uh, and give the evidence evidence if they want for you uh, if you know that those skills are not and uh, it, the whole idea is, is to convince your organization that you can do that work and uh, that uh, and uh, yeah also i forget to tell that you can also include some charts or the graph to show your idea and the flow of work people find this uh, this thing very catchy uh, and yeah uh, these are the main things which uh, should be in the excellent proposals yeah. Any of the other speakers would like to add from their point of view? Okay, I guess. If your proposal uh, app with the project, like if you think that you will make a long proposal and that will increase your chances of getting selected, so that will not happen. Uh, uh, I've seen uh, some of uh, very short uh, proposals getting selected and also some very large proposals getting rejected. So. As long as it's uh, relevant, uh, there are high chances that it will get selected. Yeah, thanks for that. So we all talk about how to apply to GSOC and um, how to go ahead with the proposal. So coming to the next step, the period in which you actually code. So uh, a question was, how much commitment do you need to give as uh, as a participant in GSOC? Like there are other things going on, maybe your internships or maybe your college work. So how do you manage that or how much time commitment has to be given on an average? Uh, so I guess uh, this year there is little change. There will be a uh, two type of projects mm -hmm. and uh, one will be of median size of 135 hours and uh, one will be of 350 hours if I'm not wrong. So for 175 hours, you have to work for 12 weeks and uh, for 350 hours, you have to do it for 22 weeks. You will be doing this thing in your summer break. So you, you will have uh, lots of time at that time. And uh, this year, the, this change, are uh, they, they tried to give uh, uh, earlier what happened, uh, less amount of people uh, able to complete this whole uh, Pro, uh, project so they consider these things and try to make extendable 
for uh, from this year and uh, so i will suggest go for medium size project unless you are already contributing to some large project as of now and yeah okay yeah so um this is an open question to all of you how was the mentor man mentee interaction in your organization like what was the medium and uh, what activities were conducted can go on one by one uh, uh, so yeah go on yes yes uh, so i'll tell about my mentor mentee interaction uh, so we had made a discord server in which there were two students and two mentors of boost real module Uh, i used to have uh, weekly meetings uh, which would go around for 1 to 2 hours uh, so we, uh, in the meetings the mentors would be asking our progress and then uh, we used to have uh, very intense discussions on how to go forward on implementation uh, and then we used to also like uh, present our ideas on whiteboard and uh, the discussions were really good uh, overall my mentors were really nice and helpful and uh, one mentor i could also uh, contact him directly via whatsapp or uh, via call also um krishna bhaiya hmm. so uh, like regard in my experience of google summer of code the mentors and i we hopped on a google meet once in a week to discuss our progress blockers and plans for the next week and apart from that i was free to message them on slack for doubts and help so you get to learn a lot of stuff from my mentors during this period which is why it is very important to communicate clearly this is this in fact should be one of the most cherishable experiences of your summer of code experience So yes, that's all. Ah, uh, Sparshaya. Mentor mentee, the mentor mentee interaction was uh, real fun. Uh, my mentor was actually a Google Google employee in America. Uh, he he had been working in Google for around eleven years. So uh, we used to have bi-weekly meetings, uh, and we used to discuss uh, what what uh, how's the progress, uh, what are the things that went wrong. What I plan to do in next week and things like that. And if, if I was facing any blocker, then he used to guide me. And also, we we had uh, the, the bonding was really fun. Like he used to ask me how how is the weather here in India, and I taught him a bit of Hindi too. So uh, once you bond with with your mentor, and uh, they, they they'll be more like a friend to you rather than uh, someone who is looking to check your progress. Yeah, that sounds really fun. So, Pranil Bhaiya, what about your experience? uh in my case uh, it was like a senior junior and uh, also uh, he was uh, he was from it rurki and uh, two other were from google itself he always suggest me good things which i need to do even after the gsoc and always encourage for participating in open source events and the rest of the things i think it was pretty similar to what i was said by sparsh Okay, that's great. So, ha, huh, but in the beginning, I remember Spush was telling about the difficulties. So, can you elaborate a bit more about on the difficulties you face in GSoC? Because since there is a bright side, there must have been some struggle behind it. So, yeah. Difficulty there are many that that I faced. So, first one was uh, when I contributed to an organization for around two months, and, and then came to know that it was rejected for this this year's GSoC. So. Th- things like that uh, are are actually quite rare to happen because uh, uh, the org that i selected was continuously getting selected from uh, in in every year so but even uh, because of that uh, i i uh, got to learn kotlin uh, like i had no experience to mobile development before that but because of contributing to that organization uh, i became familiar with kotlin and and i applied and i, I applied those skills to another organization so actually uh, the contributions weren't waste uh, they 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 were not a, so they were fruitful to me okay so this is the first problem that uh, you, you will face like uh, things like uh, this 
could happen uh, although there are few chances of that happening the second one is uh, the code base is quite big so uh, as this question has already been discussed but i faced this problem too much like uh, i was i i can recall that i was working on a particular issue and uh, it was related to a small part of the code base and the problem with that issue was uh, both the mentors were also misinterpreting a particular piece of code like even they were not aware that uh, they are thinking in the wrong direction so it finally took me around 5 days to convince them that you guys are having a misinterpretation so uh, things like that will also happen like you will uh, you will be very much frustrated and you will think that uh, maybe i should stop contributing to this work like uh, they are uh, putting too much comments on the prs and they are asking for so much uh, modifications in the prs but uh, all this is actually a test the mentors are testing to what limit you could put efforts and so this uh, ultimately proved to be a, a good factor while my selection uh, and the uh, third problem that you will face is uh, with the tech stack like uh, in most of the projects the common things that we learn like react and django you will find very few orgs that actually use react and django so same was the problem with me uh, the my project was based on bazel and scripting with kotlin so i was a beginner with kotlin and and that too uh, my project involved scripting with kotlin uh, this thing was not uh, heard uh, by my seniors or uh, or my batchmates so uh, it was really difficult for me to uh, get any useful resources like uh, there was no youtube tutorial no articles on medium for that so uh, this will happen like uh, you won't find any particular resource for that so how to recover from that just let the mentor know about this I I messaged him like I'm facing problem in uh, getting resources for this. So uh, he he actually uh, took a session with me and he explained me uh, all the basic concepts of of that new framework. So unless you uh, let them know your problem, uh, they they even won't be able to help you. So yeah, these are uh, some of the common problems that I face. Yeah, so there's always a fix to and and. Uh... like the last thing you said contacting the mentors is a positive thing like we should not be afraid in contacting them that they will feel inferior of us or something so yeah that's great and uh, what are the perks of gsoc so in a minute go ahead the stipend the first one is the of course the stipend uh, at our time we uh, we almost got around 1 lakh 12000 for uh, for the overall gsoc project and uh, before that the stipend was around 2 lakh 20000 uh, something like that so you you get a huge amount of money for working on the project and uh, the second best thing is uh, it enhances your resume to a great extent like uh, if you are applying for internships or placement uh, then if the uh, interviewer will see your resume then gsoc is actually a, a really good tag to to certify that uh, yes uh, you uh, you are really good at development because this is really not easy it's not an easy thing to crack so if you have cracked that uh, then it basically implies that uh, you you are really good with development stuff and and the third thing is uh, you you get to connect with a lot of people like uh, i connected with my mentor and uh, i can recall that uh, on on my first pr of the gsoc project he had put around 400 comments so uh, that took around one month uh, for my first pr to get merged uh, while working on the gsoc period but there was so much uh, of things to learn uh, through through his comments only so yeah so your skills will drastically improve you will get to make a lot of connections you are getting handsomely paid and uh, your resume is getting boosted yeah so there is a stipend but also there is a experience that you get along with it so yeah it's a win win situation in any case um yeah from this year we have seen a change in the pattern of uh, gsoc because uh, we have seen that they have announced two time commitments and also they have opened the program for working professionals as well uh, even earlier it was open for only students and now anybody with anybody who is an adult can apply so how do you all feel uh, like is it a step in the right direction for, and how is there something like a competition in this yes of course Uh, there will be more competitors now uh, uh, earlier a student fights for the for a single pro- project like there were more than 18 people were uh, struggling to get the project in my, uh, my project 
actually and uh, my mentor told me that there were more than 200 proposal for this organization for this year particularly so i think there will be more uh, proposal in coming uh, year and uh, yes this okay and uh, above the time commitment i think you already said yeah right uh, yeah of course yeah so the uh, for those who don't know the time commitment has been uh, like bifurcated in two parts from now so projects will be of both types 175 hours and 350 hours so you can pick up on your commitment and uh, the exact tools i think are not there yet but i think there is an option to like convert it into a larger time frame if your project does not get completed within that time frame so that is also an option from this year okay yes yes great so uh, looking at some q and a questions from our uh, audience so yeah this is this is something which uh, people who are very new to coding and gsoc in general ask which is the best language so i know there is no right answer to this but uh, yeah if you could give a base on how to like go ahead with this Uh, I don't think there is any specific uh, uh, language you should know. If you are, uh, if you uh, learn C plus plus in first year and doing competitive programming, let's uh, let's take the example of Divyam. He he did his pro, uh, project in C plus plus. So I think in uh, first or second year, everyone learned as uh, how how to code in C plus plus. So there is no language barrier as such. Yes, Sparsh, you can continue. I think almost the same thing. It, it all depends on your interest. Like, if, if you are interested in mobile dev, uh, then you can search the most famous languages that are being used or, or the most famous tech stack in that domain. Yeah, great. So uh, that's, matlab, for our first timers, it is an important thing that you don't have to be uh, step back by the language barrier. You can pick up anything, and there is a project for that. So, um, yeah. So once your GSOC had ended, uh, like the coding period ended, are you still in touch with the mentor or with the organization? Are you still making contributions, or ha are your plans? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I am contributing, uh, but in less, uh, very less amount. Uh, I, I remember I last contributed in the October of when there was a hacktober phase started, and uh, now I I am looking for the project list and the idea list which uh, which may come in the in next year coming this of twenty twenty two. Yeah. So um, a general question: Do anyone of you want to become a mentor? Have been approached by the organization? on becoming a mentor for the next year and would you like to take on that uh i am planning to become a mentor uh, so uh, uh, it's very easy to become a mentor like i simply have to write a mail on mailing list that i'm interesting and they'll approve it uh, as i have uh, previously uh, contributed to the organization okay great so um, there are some people asking about, uh, is there a certain project in GSOC? So again, for that, you can go to the archives of GSOC and you will find all the projects with the organization and the students who were selected with the tech stack and even a short description about that project. So uh, you can do some searching over there. Also, there was the website we shared in the uh, chat, which you can look for a particular tech stack. So that is also there. So any questions from the audience? We'll wait. Okay. Uh, you can put up your questions after the, now. You can start putting your questions in the chat. Um, okay. There was this question Are internships provided at the end of GSOC? So, is there something like that? No. Okay. So, this no. was a. Uh, that I you will a get internship. Uh, uh, of course, it will uh, help uh, when you are uh, when you will reach in uh, interview session with uh, any of the company. It will help there. Yeah, but there's a no free pass to anything. 
Okay. Yes, of course. I will say after completing G-Shock, you be, uh, you may get referral from the Google. Like they uh, they take response from the uh, all of the successful students, and uh, they may give a, 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 a referral in the part uh, if you going to apply for a job. Okay, great. And um, yeah, so uh, GSOC is open for all, right? First year, second year, third year, and fourth year. So uh, generally, we see students applying in the second year. And uh, so if somebody is in the first year, like they've just, and they have some knowledge of a tech stack, are they equally uh, well established to apply? Does year matter, basically? Uh, no. no, it doesn't matter. I, I know several people, uh, several students, of course, uh, they, they did Google Summer of Code in their first uh, semester, uh, first year e itself. And uh, it, it's basically you should uh, know how to code. And that's only they, they, they want. Okay. So we'll wait uh, two, three minutes for questions from audience. And then we'll wrap this session up there are no more questions and if any Some of you have still in windows so i will say that uh, you can use any of them okay uh somebody asked proposals uh so proposal will be for what for your project or for that organization or in general like uh, what what a proposal means is you have to give an overall idea of how you are actually going to implement the whole project like uh, if i get your proposal i should be in a state to code everything just by seeing the logic from your proposal uh, that is what we really call a proposal like a high level overview of the project that uh, a complete high level overview of everything that you are going to do in the project Okay, thanks, Parish. So let me try to share the proposal and if I can share now. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, so can you see my screen? Yeah, it's visible. Yeah, it's okay. So uh, see my proposals. Uh, yeah. Here, what I did, I give my link in in the first page and uh, write some of the about myself. What uh, what I know, uh, what are the technology I know, I written. And this is the special part research. And uh, before uh, submitting my uh, final proposal i re research a lot of things from the uh, google and uh, what i wanted to implement some of the parts from this this soft these are some software and uh, implemented also in my in pr project also so i did uh, all these research and uh, have written how i'm going to uh, doing my project so these are the research which I did. And uh, then I write about the project goals. And these are the goals which I completed after, uh, in the whole coding round period. And this is the timeline, which is very important. And I, uh, I distributed all my work within a weekly wise. And then with all these are whole uh, work which I did in weekly and uh, implementation this part is i did uh, have written after uh, complete uh, completion of uh, gsoc is so that anyone will be reading this uh, they will be knowing that what i did in my first week or second week like this so this is not compulsory you can write or you cannot uh, this it really doesn't matter if you are writing implementation or not so uh, uh, yes this is the uh, very important part you have to write all the uh, contribution which you did before participate and applying for the gsoc in the uh, same organization itself so whether it is merged or not or it is open or it's a issue or 
whatever it is you you have to write the merged uh, link and uh, provide some of the information related to that uh, uh, pull request or the issues so these are these all are my contribution which i did and the uh, latter part uh, uh, organization wants some details of the students so these are the mandatory part which i have to write uh, uh, in my proposals so these are uh, these are all my information when you will see you can uh, see all my details here and uh, these are the, some basic questions that uh, in, are you a score a score contributed have you contributed to a score rep before this is they they want to know just you what you want and they also want uh, they uh, they wanted to know that uh, where you study and uh, which department whatever whatever you know in programming courses so i have written all these things yeah that was all about me yeah thanks a lot sapnan that helped a lot um so yeah i think uh, we have the questions wrapped up uh regarding the proposal do mentors help in okay so special already answered that okay. so i think we are done with the questions um thank you all for joining in we have more events coming up in code peak talks uh like we have a event tomorrow itself at avl we have maintainer spotlight with renato who is a maintainer at docs so you will be you will be knowing more about how to as from a mentor's point of view how to contribute to open source and also we have shared a link in the chat regarding the winter of code or code peak which is being conducted in association with avl so we have learned a lot about gsoc right now right and so the best way would be to start practicing for it and take a step forward so we encourage you to participate in code peak which is basically a mock of how gsoc works and uh, we will we will really appreciate if you could go to that blog post and give your place to contribute in the comments so hope to see you all in the code peak leaderboard and keep contributing thank you all for joining in uh, we'll wrap the session now and the, if you have any problem you can connect me in the discord channel i will be there and uh, you can ask anything about the uh, program and with, wherever you feel uh, difficulties thanks sapil so yeah so you have a point of contact as well now so great um i think we can stop the live session